Welcome, I'm from the Samsung Galaxy A31 and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. So starting off we're gonna begin with the dark mode which simply turns the display or well the theme of the device into a dark one and you achieve it by going into the settings and display and here at the top you have the light and dark. So choose your side right here and as you can see we're now on the dark side. Um, <clears throat> so. In this mode, um, I think these are AMOLED displays, considering it's Samsung, so they will also uh, use less battery in dark mode. That's due to the fact that the dark areas don't need to be lit up, um, as for instance, something that is like white, uh, where you do need lighting up behind those pixels. Now moving on, we're gonna go into the gesture navigation, which is just a more uh, common way of, I guess, uh, using the device nowadays instead of uh, the outdated buttons on the bottom. Now to get started, again, go into the settings and again under the display, scroll down and we have the navigation bar, tap on it, and here you have full screen gestures. Select as that and you can see it out changes after a second and from here you slide up to go home, slide up and hold to go to recent and also slide from the sides to go back. As you can see, when you slide from the sides, it shows up an arrow. So, as you can see, there is the arrow also from the other side as well. So, that is the gesture navigation. Now, I'm gonna bring it back because for me on the tray, it's easier to use the buttons rather than the gestures. Uh, but when you're holding the device, it is way better to use the gestures, in my opinion. Now, also, I will mention with the gestures. When you're using them and you're struggling to go home or to recent, um, an easy way to do it is just start sliding from off the display. So for instance, as you can see, the display starts somewhere around here, uh, but you can start sliding all the way off of it. So let me just enable it. As you can see, this will then ensure that you always get that gesture correct. Uh, that is assuming you have a problem. If you don't, you can, uh, if you're more comfortable with it, you can just normally do it whenever. So, moving on, we're gonna go into the uh, side panel, which you can achieve by sliding where you can see this tiny little bezel, I guess. I'm not sure how to call it, but it's visible right over here for me. I assume this is where it is by default. Hopefully you can see this little tiny protrusion from the side. So what you do is just slide on it, this will bring up the panel and from here you have a couple different things. So number one, you can have just some default apps in here that you can access. As you can see, you can also add them if you want to. So apps that you want. Um, from there you can go back and there should be there. There we go. But you can also have something like widgets and for here, um, at least in here, we have some smart select. This is for screenshots. And going on we got the tools so this is compass and now it cycles through now you can also go to the uh, settings right here and you can add different uh, different pages so you have people tasks samsung uh, members not sure what that is uh, weather samsung other apps and reminders clipboards you can also go to the play store or uh, play store galaxy store assuming uh, we're connected to internet and in there you can find even more that you can download and add on. And also the amount of them that you have is not limited so you can enable basically all of them. Actually, let's just go back. So you can enable all of them if you want to. As you can see now we already have more. There's Compass, there's some Samsung members, uh, people. As you can see, you can keep on adding them. And the panel is accessible basically wherever you are. As you can see right now, we're on a web browser and you can still slide on it, assuming you grab it. <coughs> now moving on, we're gonna go next one to the pop-up view, which is just a way for you to have a window and also make it an app head. So when you go into the recent, as you can see, I just did. Um, so let's just choose browser tap on the icon itself and we'll get the expanded list here and you can then choose open and pop-up view and this will bring up this tiny little window that you can move around 
can also resize it if you want to and you're not only limited to one you can open multiple so let's just go next to the settings open and pop-up view that's another one um, see what else we can do I'm not sure if this is viable and looks like it is and as you can see you have multiple different apps and when you close them they will close into this app head which you can tap on and choose which one you want as you can see you can bring them all up if you want to resize them to fit the screen a little bit better if you need to and apart from that being open you can still if i can actually find other apps to open um let's see we could open different apps like for instance let's go to google and what else we can open let's go with youtube so as you can see the apps are up heads are still there and you can still open them up and now we can choose whatever the browser was which looks like it closed for some reason there we go so let's tap on this and then we should have an option to open a split screen view this will bring up the first app to the top and then the second app once you choose it will go below as you can see we're now using two apps already on the screen divided into two sections but you can still interact with the other ones as you can see and everything is fully usable in the background as long as well, you're not touching the other app so just a nice way to well multi take multitasking to a whole new level now when you're trying to close it you can go home and then click on the x and this will quit the split screen and the last thing that i wanted to show is the window opening this is more of a security option um, so if you're lending some on your device and you want them to stay in whatever section of the device well, they said that they need access to what you can do is go into the settings this is just for the one time you need to go to the settings to enable this option so you go into the settings then security or biometrics and security scroll down and we should see other security settings and then we have pin windows enable this and tap on it and you want to also enable this so use screen lock type to unpin and when you enable this you can choose one from here this is just to set it up because i don't have any kind of protection so i'm just going to choose pin for now draw it redraw it this is just for the setting up process uh, if you already have a pin pattern password whatever it is uh, you will just need to confirm it i think or it won't even ask you anything to confirm it will just check on and that's it and from here we can now pin a window so this is the case that i would be saying so for instance you tap on the app that you want to pin pin this up it gives you a message when you first time do it to hold the recent and back button to unpin so confirm that and from here you can see that you can use the app however you like um, it's not limited and the app isn't limited but if you try to go back it won't go home if you try to go to recent it won't show recent and if you try to go home it also won't go home so this will prevent anybody from well, wandering off to a on your device and just checking stuff that they shouldn't and also if you want to unpin it you will have to hold those two buttons like we've seen before it will unpin and then it automatically locks the device with the pattern that we have set so i now need to basically unlock the device to leave it so that would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that i want to share and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching